Coming up, the Gentleman Junkie giveaway knife for October. I get a baby silverback and 12 great one knife options. We're talking fixed blade and folder. I'm Bob DeMarco. This is the Knife Junkie Podcast. Welcome to the Knife Junkie Podcast, your weekly dose of knife news and information about knives and knife collecting. Here's your host, Bob the Knife Junkie DeMarco. Welcome back to the show. One of my favorite comments from this past week was from The Swing and Axe. The Swing and Axe says, Great show, Bob. So many highlights. When your show airs, it reminds me of getting excited when The Simpsons were on public broadcast television. Sounds like we're the same generation, The Swinging Axe. Remember TV guides, he says. Anyways, uh, Spartan Harzy Folder Warthog Edition and the All Black Mannix 2XL in pocket today. Cheers, dude. Cheers to you, The Swinging Axe. I love that comment. Uh, it did take me back. I remember uh, I remember Simpsons season three. That was my favorite uh, back then when I was in college. So, uh, yep, I remember all that stuff. Oddly enough, uh, it's odd I remember anything from college. So uh, thank you, The Swingin' Axe, and everyone else who watched and commented. I really appreciate it. It's great to have you here. All right. All that said, let us now get to a pocket check. What's in his pocket? Let's find out. Here's the knife junkie with his pocket check of knives. In my front right pocket today, the knife I kind of refused to send back to Dirk Pinkerton. I'm doing it this week, Dirk. This is coming back to you this week. Uh, this is a prototype for his standoff model uh, that he's going to be releasing uh, under his own shingle. This will be something that you pre-order. And uh, that, that's got S90V blade steel, a perfect true Warncliffe blade there. By true Warncliffe, I mean it's a constant descending arc from uh, the thumb rest to the point with no uh, no clips, no interruptions, no drops, uh, just one steady arc. Uh, kind of like Warncliffe you see on a sway back. But this one is 3.7 inches titanium frame lock with the, those giant chamfers that uh, Dirk puts on. On this one, you see two different kinds of jimping. You see the standard jimping going all the way across the spine. And then you see the sort of half scoops uh, that Mr. Pinkerton puts on a lot of his stuff. You hear me talk about him a lot. I love his work. What can I say? Uh, I, 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 it's a great combination of EDC and, uh, you know, historical weaponry all jammed into uh, one knife. So this one will be coming out soon. I got to send this back to Dirk. There are a couple of tweaks he's going to be making, but uh, tweaks indeed, that is it. Because uh, this thing is so incredibly dialed in. I can't wait to have one of my own. Uh, okay, so next in my front uh, right pocket, actually, right next to the uh, Pinkerton standoff is my Benny's clip, um, which I got to say has such a stout pull, but luckily you can grab that flat uh, right here near near the nail neck and pull it out. Now, ordinarily, uh, and, and if that sounded like a complaint, it's not. It's a it's a whimper uh, because my my hand, you know, uh, if you've been listening to me complain, uh, I jacked up my thumb a little while ago. I cut it very close, and um, well, I know I nicked the nerve, even though the doctor said I didn't. Um, and then I woke up and my. My forefinger's broken somehow. So I don't know. It's weird stuff happening with my hands right now. And so grabbing onto very, very sharp blades and then pulling against a strong spring can make one nervous. But uh, it's worth it with the uh, with the Jack Wolf knives. You might say, hey, you have uh, you have the flipping version of that. Why not carry that? Well, I say, mind your own business. I need a slip joint in my pocket. No, this thing I uh, I adore. I love the Benny's clip. It's uh, Ben Belkin's version of the Lanny's clip, the famous Tony Bowes um, model of clip point folder that he created for a friend named Lanny, as you might imagine. Uh, this one has hand rub satin uh, going horizontally on that uh, um, hollow grind and then a nice, um, well, it's, it's, all, it's all hand satin. I don't know why I was just talking about that. It jumps out there. You can see it on the flat too. A larger bolster than the uh, first run of this with this time three flutes. Uh, here you have that gorgeous purple kiranite and came in some other um, really nice treatments. You know, Every release has a cool new treatment or material with, with the Jack Wolf knives. And I 
I love them. All right, next up, uh, going going back to the one that started it all for me and TKL knives, though this was not my first TKL knife. Um, that was the Guardian. This is the first one that I carried obsessively and inspired the design of the Agent 001 in terms of the uh, the size and carry profile of this. Uh, I just love this knife. This is the Night Stalker. Um, I think before the Agent 001, or you know what, I'm just going to say, this is definitely TKL Knives' most um, you know, popular and most sellingest, I know that's not how you say it, knife over time. I know that the Agent uh, series has has um, has popped up as another great um, uh, knife in his lineup, but this is the, the classic OG. I love this one. I also have the reverse edge version of this, so just look at this profile and imagine the edge on the top side, and it's a nice Pakal called the MR1. Uh, this is a perfect knife. I mean, this perfect fixed blade knife. It carries so well. Um, for me, I carry it horizontally on the front right next to my belt for a reverse draw uh, from the right hand. And this sheath just is the same width as my belt. I got have that discrete carry clip there. And it just melts right into the belt. And, and something about this handle curving down around the ring um, and the thinness of the ring area. So you have a long length, you know, you have this length handle, but um, you have a quarter of it that doesn't have the width of the two scales. So what I'm trying to say is it really does not print. It un Under a t-shirt, you'll never know that this is there. Uh, so it's a great all-around knife. Of course, this one uh, is AEBL. I, don't, I say, of course, this was the first run of AEBL. I think that uh, Tim ever did over there it's got the nickel boron coating and uh man it's just it's an incredible incredible knife i highly recommend the uh, tkl knives night stalker uh another one i highly recommend this is um i don't want to say it's a, a surprise it i wasn't surprised at how great it is i was surprised at how much i love this knife i got it because tom nugent of knives by nuge was on my show and i saw him at uh, blade show and i wanted to have something that he made for the sentimental reason that I interviewed him. I, I like doing that in my collection, but so I got this. He didn't have much left on his table. People love his stuff, especially outdoorsmen and campers and such. Uh, but he had this primitive wicket and I love, you know me, I love the jute cord, uh, cord wrapping. And I saw this little guy and I, frankly, I thought, oh, I bet I can afford that. And then I picked it up and I was like, oh my lands. Uh, it's just a great little knife. I bought it, put it around my neck, and it's been on there like mm, I'd say thirty percent of the time since I got since I got it, which is uh, you know way more than any other neck knife at this point. I, I carry carry this a lot. I carry it right next to the skin. It's so thin, and uh, this it's not like sackcloth. It's not like putting burlap on your skin. This is actually a pretty nice texture. Um, uh, in the handle it doesn't in other words it doesn't rub against the chest and kind of annoy you it just feels great i love this thing so it's it, what i'm trying to say great stash knife great knife that you'll have on you kind of all the time if you're a neck knife guy and uh could easily drop that in the pocket too this could be depending on what you wear this could be like a fifth pocket carry with a little discreet carry clip on it also, it uh, since I've been doing a lot more like noodling around at the fire pit and cooking over the fire pit, uh, I've been using this one a lot just to feather stick and to scrape to use the spine to uh, scrape uh, fat wood to get little curls because I've been trying to light fires without lighters and I've been successful twice now. I know, I know, but uh, I'm learning. All right, that's it for my pocket check today. Let me know what you had on you today. Then check out the Knives by Nuge Primitive Wicket. I mean, the Primitive, he doesn't always have, uh, but he, I know he's just releasing one as I speak. Um, so he did a drop a couple of days ago, if you're listening to this as it comes out. So he does regular drops. Check him out on Instagram. Also, the Jack Wolf Knives, Benny's Clip, and from Dirk Pinkerton, the forthcoming um, standoff, which I'm sending back this week. All right. Uh, I want to show you what we're going to be giving away for the Gentleman Junkie Knife Giveaway in October. If you don't know what a Gentleman Junkie is, that's our high tier of support on Patreon. Every month uh, we do a sort of courtesy uh, GAW and we put up the Wheel of Destiny with all the Gentleman Junkie names on it. We spin it and whoever 
it lands on gets it sent to them uh, this is courtesy of off grid knives this is their new mamba 3 and it's a beautiful full titanium and magna cut uh worn clip this is a full size knife so that blade is i'm going to get technical here that blade is four inches. <laughs> that is a four inch magna cut blade. Uh, somewhat slender. This is what I love about uh, off grid knives. They are incredible slicers. I mean, uh, besides everything else, they always have incredible stout build quality. These are made in either by Best Tech or in Taiwan. They have they manufacture their stuff in a couple of different places. Uh, they're Taiwanese manufacturer. It, you know, does some really incredible stuff. I think that's where this might be from. Not sure, though. He will be on the show shortly to, to talk about what's been going on lately with off-grid knives. But you've got this uh, titanium handle with that golf ball texture. It's so nice and grippy. And uh, and also, it's just a pleasing texture in hand. Um, and as my right thumb comes online, it's still uh, a bit numb. It's a, I've been carrying my... Uh, I, I snagged one of these out of the box. I've been carrying mine a lot, and this texture is great. I can feel it through the numbness of my thumb. <laughs> but it's not uh, in any way, it's not going to hassle your pocket and fray, fray anything. But the real star of the show here is this Warncliffe blade. It is so awesome. Uh, a great point. This is just like the Enforcer blade, except it's got some of that Mamba spine treatment. Uh, the last Mamba was a three-incher. And uh, so this, the Mamba V2 had a, I'm sorry, a 3.25 inch blade, uh, but it was the same exact setup, same width, same uh, titanium uh, uh, handle, except just smaller. So this thing is a fantastic knife. And for the size, it feels quite thin, even though it's a, you know, a sort of standard half inch thick. Um, so this will be, we will be giving this Magna Cut and titanium uh, Mamba V3 away, and then also this uh, Bullet V2. And the Bullet V2 is a bit driver from Off Grid Knives. Uh, I have the first one, and it's a great bit driver. Uh, it's got incredible action. This could be a fidget spinner, how long that uh, top portion spins, but it has three very strong magnets. Uh, Three divots with very strong magnets holding in. Um, I think it's a T. Let's see. You got a T6, a T8, and a T10 in there. And then uh, anything else you want, you gotta you gotta bring yourself. Byob, bring your own bit. Okay, so uh, this one also this this is a new thing for them. They have a filler tab on the off side, which is awesome. And by the way, this deep carry pocket clip is great fully fully embedded in the handle with flat screws one thing i can definitely say for carry orifice of off-grid knives is that he listens uh to knife nerds and knife junkies like you and me and he incorporates those changes in the reiterations of his knives this is the v3 of the of the mamba become a gentleman junkie and it could be yours all right. Uh, before we get to Knife Life News, I just want to say, if you want that knife and you want to become a patron, just go to a, a patron. Just go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. You can also scan the QR code on your screen. Uh, go there. Check out. There are three tiers of support there um, and different ways. You can pay for the whole year. You can do it month to month. Uh, some people hop on uh, when they see something that they like a lot, um, like the recent... Um, uh, Demco giveaway. Um, so all are welcome. Uh, so go to the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon and check it out. Again, that's the knifejunkie.com slash Patreon. Adventure Delivered, your monthly subscription for hand-picked outdoor, survival, EDC, and other cool gear from our expert team of outdoor professionals. The knifejunkie.com slash battle box. You're listening to the Knife Junkie podcast. And now here's the Knife Junkie with the Knife Life News. I was just waxing poetic about the beauty of true worn clips. Well, we knife just showed off a prototype at Blade Show West. And this is a, pardon me, it's a design collaboration with Rafal Brzezki. And he has uh, collaborated uh, with We Knife a few times. He did the shoot on, he did the shadow fire, and he did that cool little. Um, 
cool little flipping kiridashi. Can't remember what that's called, but we have had one here and gave it away. Um, but uh, this is a very nice looking knife. This one is called, uh, what are they calling this thing? Oh, the BRR15. And the funny thing about this, uh, this just, they just showed off this prototype of a production version of a custom knife called the BRR15 that just debuted, you know, eight months ago at Blade Show. I don't know, eight months ago. It's less than that. Half a year ago at Blade Show Atlanta. So kind of cool to have the custom come out and then several months later have the production come out. Things are looking up for Rafal Brzezki and this uh, beautiful model, the BRR15. This is um, going to be, let's see, uh, oh, 3.25 inches of M390 blade steel. Uh, you've got a nice sort of formal setup here on the one prototype that we've uh, seen. By that, I mean uh, titanium bolster lock with a sort of uh, uh, dark, uh, you know, black and white swirly uh, carbon fiber. So it's got a real nice sort of formal look to it. It's a gents knife. Oh, very wicked looking blade. I'd love to see this in a larger than 3.25 inch. Actually, come to think of it, I wouldn't like to see this in a larger version because then uh, with that blade shape, it would be it would it would near moral imperative and I might have to buy it. Uh, 2.97 ounces is the weight on this prototype. Pretty nice. So it's a, a less than an ounce an inch that used to be an old formula i'm not sure if that's still important to people um but uh, keep your eyes peeled for the brr 15 from rafal brzezki and i said civivi before i meant we i'm sorry um it is a we knife but speaking of civivi they have a new one coming out that oh my stars i gotta go through all of the different mailboxes uh make sure that they haven't asked to see if i want to look at this knife because it looks so cool it's a fixed blade knife they've been killing it with their fixed blade knives so vivi man hats off to you this one's called the airy peak and i can't tell if it's an outdoor knife it's if it's a fighting knife what it is but it is so cool uh this is a six inch upswept highly swedged uh it's not persian but it's definitely an upswept uh blade looks like it would be great in a fight looks like it would be great outdoors um i just love it i i i'm i i'm loving the the wood handled one um that's probably their cure gura bushia wood or whatever they call it um geez sorry i shouldn't have even bothered man uh but i love the wood uh and um two-tone uh, satin finish there this one is just debuted at Blade Show West. Uh, Kydex. Now, I'm not sure if these are available yet. They've been shown off. I think I think a good deal of that happens um, over there, but we'll see. We'll see. I don't know, man. It's beautiful, though. The handle reminds me of an old Treeman knife. Not old, but uh, Treeman blades. If you don't know them, they make really cool fixed blade knives. That sort of reminds me of a Treeman handle. I was actually uh, looking through the article. I was like, this has to be a collaboration knife because that looks like a couple of different designers. But uh, in any case, I think it's in-house, and I also think it's beautiful. Um, it would be especially nice with a leather sheath, but hey, I'm not, I'm not grumbling. All right, next up, uh, this one has a Kydex <laughs> sheath as well. What a terrible segue. Uh, this next one is also a knife. Uh, it's from Tops. It's called the Lilith, which the Lilith, I, I love the cognitive dissonance. It's like Lilith uh, is like a beautiful woman from days gone by in a gauzy dress in, in you know, blurry memory uh, dancing in the field. And yet this knife is... Uh, not that this is a beautiful 14 inch recurve tanto is what i'm calling it uh, uh ben schwartz of uh, knife news said it looks like a copus i i uh, disagree um respectfully uh so i'm calling this a giant recurve tanto uh it's got yes it's got a forefinger ring something i used to be obsessed with when i was like a uh a teenager 12 year old i i, th I think uh a Lou Diamond Phillips in Young Guns had a Bowie with that, and he'd spin it around. I thought that is so cool, but uh, I, I don't know why it's cool. I don't think it's very useful, but uh, it it looks cool. Uh, this is designed by Jason Johnson, who's uh, he's been on YouTube forever as pro knife thrower. I know I've been watching him for a long time. Uh, YouTube uh, knife guy. It's uh, 2015. He started that's not forever that's nine years but still it feels like it 
Um, uh, so this thing here is uh, uh, interesting. You look at the handle, it's got that ring, which seems very unlike something you would want on a throwing knife. I don't know, uh, because it's a retention thing. But then you look at the handle and it tapers at the pommel. And that's very definitely uh, comes from his uh, designing implements for throwing. So this, this big thing, I would imagine, is not only an awesome chopper, an intimidating weapon for sure. It's scary, man, looking. But if you had to throw it, I bet it would throw great. I mean, I'm just imagining, seeing as it's uh, 1095 blade steel, so springy and tough, designed by Jason Johnson, and uh, with that tapered handle like that. Very, very cool. Uh, big Kydex sheath. This thing is available now. I mean, you know, pull this out on your next camping trip and impress your friends. All right, lastly, in Knife Life News, this is another collaboration. I love this. Uh, all of them except the Civivi Airy Peak were um, collaborations. I love that. Uh, Artisan Cutlery. So uh, the reason I love this, I'm just going to, little side note, is because uh, I, I believe that it's good for everyone. It's good for the designer. Uh, it's it's good for the knife company because they can pull other talent in and uh, a wider audience in. But it's also good for people like myself who, um, for instance, when the BRR15 comes out from Wee Knife, it's probably the only chance I'll ever get to get that Rafal Brzezki uh, knife, unless I really, really want to save up and wait and order and figure out how to get a custom version of it. It's great that uh, these companies put these designers in reach. Okay. Uh, lastly here, artisan cutlery Clio, um, name of a girl I had a crush on in college. Uh, this is by Johan Jordan. I think that's how we pronounce his name. He's a South African knife maker and designer. And uh, the blade immediately uh, makes me think of uh, the Pilar. Uh, from CRKT, another girl I had a crush on in college. She was Spanish. This is interesting. Uh, yeah, so the Clio and the Pilar. I, I love that blade shape. And uh, I guess that blade shape is evocative of women that draw my eye somehow. Uh, this one, though, has a full titanium handle. It's got a, a button lock S90V blade steel at 2.54 inches, which Ben Schwartz uh, says is a magical number. And I know 3.25 inches is a magical number and four. Uh, this is cool. I didn't know, uh, but two and a half. Yeah, that makes sense, especially if you live in a place like Chicago or something like that. Uh, so it has a textured faux inlay, which I like, sculpted titanium clip, uh, which is reversible, which is somewhat rare on a production knife so a uh, pretty cool knife available now and uh yeah the clio all right bringing back some memories Eh, not really i don't remember that time very well okay coming up we're going to go to the state of the collection but first i want to talk quickly about launch cart uh if you are a knife maker don't skip over this. If you're a knife maker, if you have uh, a shop, you sell anything online and you have Shopify, I want to tell you something. Shopify is Canadian, which is fine. I like our Canadian brothers, but they also will tell you what you can and cannot sell, which is kind of uh, Canadian of them, uh, at least recently. So uh, if you want something a little more American, uh, where you can actually sell what you want, as long as it's legal and uh for a few pennies less, I don't think the deal is radically better, but it is a little better than Shopify. And you want to keep that business here in the country without people uh, sniffing in your business, check out LaunchCart. Uh, go to the knifejunkie.com slash launch. Uh, Jim has discovered LaunchCart and really, man, he's very enthusiastic about it. Jim and I uh, have a lot of the same opinions about things, and he was very, very happy to find this service in the United States. Um, that's not going to hassle you, that uh, that uh, respects your freedom uh, to sell what you want as long as it's legal. And uh, I do too. So check it out. Launch cart. Theknifejunkie.com slash launch. Uh, coming up, we're going to get into the one new knife I got this past week in the state of the collection. The Shockwave Tactical Torch is your ultimate self-defense companion. Featuring a powerful LED bulb that lasts 100,000 hours, a super sharp crenulated bezel, and a built-in stun gun delivering 4.5 million volts. Don't settle for ordinary. Choose the Shockwave Tactical Torch. The KnifeJunkie.com slash Shockwave. 
And now that we're caught up with Knife Life news, let's hear more of the Knife Junkie podcast. So uh, Holtzman Knives reached out to me. Holtzman's Knives, I know I've seen them at Blade Show, and I know I met one of the individuals there and checked out their knives. And it's fortuitous and uh, coincidental that they reached out to me and asked if I wanted to see one of their survival knives. And I said, well, yeah, of course I do. But uh, it wasn't just like, yes, I want a free knife. Send me a free knife, which I must admit in the past I have succumbed to. Uh, but in this case, uh, well, lately, I, I'm not so much like that anymore. Um, I only have so much room and bandwidth. Um, but this really interests me because of these things I've been talking about, uh, trying to get a little bit more uh, use out of my knives outside. And while doing so, brush up on some skills that uh, survival skills that I've kind of learned along the way, whether from watching TV or YouTube, um, but definitely not practice them. So. Um, I thought, why not start actually doing that? So yes, Holtzman's, I'd love to check out one of your small survival knives. This one, uh, they sent me uh, a, a few options, and this one I chose is called the Baby Silverback. And it's definitely smaller than I expected, but I really, um, I like it. And I'm glad it is because it's a, this is going to go into a kit I'm putting together right now, a survival kit. Uh, but it worked last night to start a fire. I'm going to use it again as I record this tonight. I'm going to be cooking a pork loin over the fire. I'm going to use this to start that fire. Um, I'll get to that in a second. So this is the knife right here. It uh, The sheath is very retentive, uh, but uh, it'll loosen up eventually. Um, it's better to have it retentive than not. All right, you can see some of the fer ferronesium sort of... Uh, um, dust on the top from where I struck it. But uh, this cool little D2 blade is wickedly sharp. It's got that great swedge. That was uh, definitely a draw for me. I, I thought like, yes, I want to check out this little survival knife, but I also want something that's going to pierce and thrust well. Um, you know, that's always a consideration for me. That's why I'm not too keen on the on the cleaver blades and that kind of thing. Um, but nice uh, D2 blade. It's got a beautiful blue-lined G10 contoured handle. Very comfortable. You can see, let's see if I can just hold it still here. You can see from this uh, perspective, looking down on it, it swells out at the palm, rather Coke bottle-ish. And then it's got this very nice finger choil, very comfortable. And then these little thumb notches on the sides of the scale right up at the... Um, Ricasso are very nice for if you do those sort of chest pull things where here uh, I'm going to do this in the main camera where if you have a piece of wood like say that this is a piece of wood and you're carving it you hold it like this and then you pull the wood I've seen uh, Gideon's tactical do that a bunch of times looks cool and actually you can get a lot of force behind it uh, that's what I like these little notches for here um, by the way, if anyone knows that dude, I'd love to have him on the show. I, I've reached out to him before. I can't quite get in touch with him, but I, I think he's a Aaron from Gideon's Tactical. Anyway, uh, very, very, very comfortable handle. Yes, it's a three finger handle for sure. Uh, so I put this little lanyard on. One, one little ding is the lanyard hole. This thing requires a lanyard. It's so small, but the lanyard hole is very stingy. I had to gut this 550 cord and then it took some doing just to get the gutted 550 cord through there. And the reason uh, I'd rather use full fledged cord is so that these little knots are bigger and I would do like a more of a monkey's fist kind of thing. Uh, but in in any case, it stays in the hand pretty well. It it uh, has these 90 degree, uh, not uncomfortable, but 90 degree uh, spine to strike the ferro rod. It comes with a with a little ferro rod holder. It came with an extra sort of clip like a. Um, like a boot clip style clip. You've got this a really nice ferro rod here, also with that blue lining. Uh, worked very well on fat wood shavings and dust. I used the back of this to make the dust, you know, just kind of scraping. And then it's got this built-in sharpener here, diamond stone on the side. It's a little spotty, I got to say. Uh, the texture is rather smooth here. Gets a little gritty here. It's not exact. It's not mounted very it's fine. It's not coming out, but the fit and finish right here is a little not exactly on point, but all in all, I think this is a pretty excellent knife. It comes with this. Uh, I mean, 
so far that's my my impression and uh, i've actually used it and <laughs> that's uh you know for me it's pretty good i used it on wood and to start a fire uh we're gonna see how it works long term but that d2 steel i love d2 steel and uh, it seems so far as if it's pretty well heat treated because of the carving i've done with it um and and what was the carving it was mostly uh kindling making and feather stick making and little curls and and scraping uh one of my i keep showing you the sheath i really like this uh, clip i'm not a huge fan of the of this kind of clip the um what is it called what are these called you're yelling at your screen now but i like this one it's a little thinner and uh it, it keeps it a little closer to the to the belt uh overall i really like this knife and um i think it's going to go in my special fire making and uh kind of cook kit that i've been working on and uh it would be a great addition to any sort of kit like that uh nice and small you could use this as it, they offer a couple of neck knife uh, options like a, a a loop of paracord and also a chain for me it's a little too heavy and it's a little too bulbous you know comparing that to comparing that to the knives by nuge primitive wicket that i carry all the time it's like two and a half times the width or let's see yeah you know it's about twice the width so uh much better as a belt knife or drop in the pocket fixed blade knife and i gotta say i love the accoutrement that it comes with the different clips and the ferro rod are you know very make it a very uh high value package so i'll be doing a a, a video on this one all right well uh this knife kind of inspired this uh um this next category so has just been kind of going outside and using my knives a little bit more uh been thinking about well what are the knives that that i carry repeatedly and some of these i haven't carried in a long time but i carried them for a long time when i had them because of how overall useful they are and how easy they are just to grab and throw in the pocket without thinking do i really want a tanto today do i really want to recurve today it's just so you'll see a lot of pretty generic blade shapes here but hey that's what it is all right so these are 12 great one knife options and i'm going to start with folders i split down the middle i'm going to start with folders and off offer alternatives for the folders uh just size alternatives basically and then for the fixed blades we're just going to show you those because the world of fixed blades is so vast. Uh, okay, so the first one is the Spyderco Manix. And the one that I have is the one that Shane, uh, Edgy American, gave me. Thank you, Shane. I love this thing. This is S110V, and it's in the lightweight package. So this thing really is very lightweight. It's got that ball lock um, and a full flat ground leaf shaped blade that is so slicey. And then in this case, it's got a super steel, like an ultra super steel in the S110V. Um, <clears throat> but you can get this from S110V all the way down to BD1. I say all the way down to because that's a budget steel and it's, you know, it's not a, a high as much of a high performer as this. But if you like this design and you like this knife, you can get it in a variety of um steels and handle materials including g10 and all manner all manner of g10 and micarta um and uh oh what was i gonna say oh but for me spider co's are very much uh kind of replaceable in in a way and what i mean by that is if that's too big for you and the and the manix 2xl is too big for you then maybe you want a delica and the reason i say these are interchangeable is because of the the uh the types of blades the the full height of the full flat ground blades offer very very similar performance in terms of how they cut and how they slice um, of course the s110v on top is going to uh, have a different performance characteristics than the vg10 on on bottom outperform it in in most ways uh, if not all, but you get similar and same cutting, uh, similar to same cutting performance. If you like the profile of the Manix 2 a lot, but you want something the size of the Delica, well, maybe you can get the um, the native, the small native, uh, which kind of looks a little bit more like this than this. But uh, what I'm getting at is this: the uh, the Spyderco Manix in my book 
makes for a great one knife option. And I'll tell you the final reason why I would pick that over, say, a uh, Delica or Endura or Endella is that this has the fidget factor because it's got that that ball lock. And uh, yeah, it's a fun one to flick open and close. So the first one I would say is the Spyderco Manix 2 in its many iterations. <clears throat> Next up is the, you probably guessed this, the Ritter Hogue RSK Mark 1. In this case, the automatic version. Uh, this is, uh, this started life as the Benchmade Ritter Griptilian, Doug Ritter, a, um, you know, he's the guy who started knife rights. That's why his name might ring a bell if it doesn't uh, as knife designer, but he's been designing knives for a long time. And his entree into the knife design world was as a, uh, a helicopter pilot and a survival specialist. So uh, one of his uh, first ventures was to create a uh, uh, a website which acted as a clearinghouse for all sorts of survival information and products. And then he started producing um, survival kits that were uh, getting sold a lot to helicopter pilots and units uh, because of the effective lightweight uh, aspect. And part of that was the Griptilian model. He went to Benchmade back in the day and said, I want to make a a, a drop point blade that is made of the best steel we can find at the time, but have it in a uh, an inexpensive handle. And at the time, Benchmade was making the Griptilian, as they still do now. And so they went with the Griptilian handle, which is famously cheap and lightweight and contoured and comfortable and grippy, and um, but made a blade differently shaped than the Griptilian in this drop point uh, Ritter shape and made it out of at the time i guess it was s30v and and that was their super steel and and then as time went on and super steels advanced you know that kept uh going up but the whole point was uh, that you have a the best possible blade you can in the lightest and least expensive package um so this uh you know now fast forward uh 20 years and the Ritter RSK Mark One, RSK standing for Ritter Survival Knife Mark One, is being made by Hogue. Uh, Benchmade uh, in 2016 stopped doing OEM work, and uh, Hogue took up the mantle and started making this legendary knife. They lengthened the handle a little bit, uh, created their own able lock, advanced bar lock, amb um, ambidextrous bar lock enhanced, uh, which was their version of the. Um, of the axis lock and started producing the RSK Mark one, never looking back. Uh, everyone's been extremely happy with the Hogue, uh, as have I, this is the automatic version came out last year with Magna cut blade steel living up to that initial mission. So you got a relatively inexpensive G 10 handle. I don't know about that. Actually, it's nicely contoured, beautifully contoured and has a whole bunch of milling. Uh, but in relative terms, it's not titanium. And uh, so you have a relatively inexpensive handle, but that incredible Magna Cut blade living up to the, the spirit of the original intent of the knife. If that's too big for you, you can go to Knifeworks. This is a Knifeworks exclusive I didn't mention. If you want the, the Ritter Hogue RSK series at all, you got to go to Knifeworks. Uh, but you can also get a small version, the Mini. So this is just like a Mini Griptilian. This is just like a regular full-size Griptilian, though the handles are slightly longer on these um, making the mini i gotta say more comfortable than a regular griptilian because it gives you a little bit more on the pinky side and a little bit more weight back there adds um, to the balance uh this one was sent to me by doug ritter uh, which i'm very proud of uh, it's a nice keepsake to have he's such an awesome dude i did swap out uh the clip though i've never been a huge fan of the hogue clips though it seems like on the automatic they went with a slightly thicker gauge which has always been my gripe, the lightness of the gauge. But look at that button screw sticking out. It's like, uh, that's my one kind of, eh, they could have fixed that. So that is uh, number two. That's the Ritter Hogue RSK Mark I. Next up, this list would not be complete. It's a, this, is a, the, 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 this is an expensive one. We got a couple expensive ones on here, but you get what you pay for. It is true. And uh, if you were to be, and I know someone, and I'm, I'm coaching them in this direction, 
who who is a, you know has great taste in everything wants a good pocket knife but just like a good pocket knife and wants to be somewhat extravagant and i think this is the way i'm pushing is a chris reeve um i'm gonna try and open it with my left hand oh look at that uh i was able to open it with my left hand the chris reeve sabenza and now there's the sabenza 31 oh god this was awesome all right i gotta tell you about this i was at a party at down the street um it was uh, some close friends, uh, one of whom um, I will take credit for uh, turning into a knife junkie. And then there are a couple of other people there who have also uh, embraced maybe some dormant knife love. And there was a guy I'd never met. And I'm like, man, this is going to seem like I'm uh, flirting with him. But I go up to him and I say, is that a is that a Chris Reeve knife with a millet aftermarket clip in your pocket he's like oh, yeah he pulls out an insingo beautiful insingo or um um yeah insingo no insingo blade uh what was it a uh not an umnumzan what's the one he pulls it out uh and shows it off and we just started talking he was one of these guys actually who has very few knives but one of them is a chris reeve and he works in construction i believe he's a foreman or something like that and uh and he loves it. So yes, uh, there are some people who are like that. If uh, And there's another dude that I was telling you about. He's a little bit different kind of a guy, but uh, man, he's got a lot of very nice stuff and I'm going to guide him in this direction. There's something on the tip of my blade. I'm not sure what it is, uh, but the Chris Reeve Sabenza, or I have, I have the, um, I have the Umnums on. There's the Inkosi. What am I getting wrong here? Write it in the comments. What am I getting wrong? Uh, but there are a lot of great models from them. The 31 is so cool. The 31, the Sabenza 31, uh, 31 meaning 31 years of making the Sabenza is such a cool one. It's got such a beautiful shaped inlay. It reminds me of like a an old car, like a 1930s car. Great knife. It, the You know, the tolerances that all others are compared to, just a great, 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 great knife. I'm going to put this in my pocket when I'm done here. Um, but say it's too big and say you want some modern amenities like a uh, flipper or something like that. You could go, though I'm not sure if they're making this in the flipper version anymore. Uh, the tactile knives, um, the tactile knives rock wall to me is a great small type Sabenza like knife. It's got a bank vault sort of feel to it, even though it's a liner lock and it doesn't have that hydraulic feel. It has more of a drop shutty feel, uh, but it's got a incredible blade, perfect blade shape uh, that really straddles the line for me personally between a sort of uh, very utilitarian look and a sort of combative look to me. It reminds me a little bit of an old school combat knife, but that's me. That's the lens I see the world through. Uh, but you'll get beautiful flourishes like the milling because tactile is known for their, their milling and their incredible surface textures, as well as they're all made in Texas build. These things are amazing. Uh, these are made in Idaho. So if made in America uh, means something to you, uh, important, these are great options. But um, I, I would really say that for a great one knife option, this is the one I would go with uh, on this expensive titanium front um, because it's, They've been they've been dialing that knife in for 31 years. All right, next up is the Demco. Now this is the Demco AD20. This is a machine ground blade. Uh, so this is kind of in the same price range as that Sabenza. Uh, not an inexpensive knife. However, if you love the Shark Lock, which I do, and uh, not only for its incredible strength. Um, it sort of reinforces itself. Uh, Andrew Demko is a genius with creating uh, um, folding knife locks, and they all seem to be stronger than the one made before it, and they all seem to reinforce themselves. Uh, if you like that and you like the fidgetiness, which I have to say is an appeal, um, but you don't want to lay out the money, and this is a rather large knife, and you have to wait for it. For instance, um, uh, Lavender Pants uh, hooked me up with this one. A uh, long time ago, he was at River's Edge Cutlery and saw this, and I had just been blabbing about how I wanted one, and uh, he made it happen. So uh, they're not necessarily easy to come by, probably easier now than they were, but if you love this, perhaps it's too big, 
you can always go for the production, Taiwanese production. Uh, and <clears throat> I stress that because Taiwan is known for making outstanding knives, the Taiwanese companies uh, in general. Uh, this is a first generation AD 20.5. There A lot has happened with the AD 20.5 since this came out. <clears throat> but it is uh, the um, more, well, the more affordable version of this knife. Now, if you follow the show, you know that it comes in titanium. It comes in, you can get it in all sorts of uh, different versions, different treatments. This very basic one, when it first came out, was like a 125. I, I, I know it's gone up a little bit, um, but this had the OS 10A. I know that they're making them with uh, much better steels. And But the fact that you can get this and it's, it's uh, baby brother, there's one with a 2.5 inch blade called the baby shark, I think, um, all with the shark lock. Um, and those are even more in uh, less expensive sub hundred dollars. So if you want a non cold steel Demco, and I say it that way only because a, a vast majority of his catalog is in, or of his design catalog is uh, wrapped up in cold steel. Uh, so gloriously, I should say. Um, that some of the knives, you know, if you want a, a Demco, if you want a shark lock, you can only get it from Demco. So uh, there are a number of different ways you can do it. You can go the super expensive route and get a full custom and uh, really wait, or you can do something like this. Uh, but these are great one knife options, stout, sturdy, um, and fidgety. And, and the fidgety part you might think is frivolous, but it's important. It's important like putting a small backgammon board or a small card, uh, a deck of cards in your survival kit so you don't lose your mind uh, in a survival situation or a book or whatever it is. That's the fidget factor. Um, that's so you don't lose your mind. <clears throat> okay, next. Uh, this is one I've been carrying a lot, and I was just showing off because we're giving away its... Uh, the all black version of this, but this is mine. There are many like it, but this one is mine. This is the Mamba 3 uh, by Off Grid Knives. And, uh, you know, it was really hard for me to come up with one off grid knife folder that's a great one knife option. Uh, I'm a sucker for the off grid knives, um, not only because I like the way they look, I love the way they cut. They are, they, here's the thing, they look like tactical knives but they're some of the best utility knives out there there's some of the best cardboard cutters um out there and i absolutely i love them uh nice thin blade steel always excellent uh flat ground geometry always thin behind the edge but in very robustly built knives this one here is titanium um and big four inches of magna cut so this is going to be an expensive one i believe this is in the 275 range uh don't quote me i haven't looked it up i gotta i gotta look it up this was courtesy of off-grid knives and uh so i thank him for that uh thank carrie for that uh but if that's too much for you either it's too expensive or it's probably too large a lot of people don't like uh, nine inch folders well there are other options from off-grid knives and this is the same profile in a smaller and much less expensive uh version this is the mini wait, wait this is the enforcer uh there's the enforcer xl that i've shown off that's this size with a big glass breaker and the and the um g10 handle this is the more pocketable 3.25 inch version of that you've got the deep carry pocket clip with the uh, sunk flat screws you've got this incredibly textured g10 uh just silky smooth folding action drop shut action um, with that amazing um, uh, Warncliffe blade. This one is D2. Oftentimes you'll see 154 CM on off-grid knives and then higher tier you'll see M390 and now Magna Cut. Um, but they're just sturdy as the day is long. Uh, I think they're really good looking and, they're, and they have the fidget factor. Um, plus you can go inexpensive here, uh, sub 100, uh, sub 75, I think this one, uh, or you can go expensive and luxurious with the off-grid knives. So definitely great one knife options and such a usable Warncliffe shape. You've got some belly, you've got that point low slung so that you can use it for all sorts of utility tasks. But if you're going to thrust with it, 
it's, you know, right where it kind of needs to be. It's not like you have to make any special accommodations as you would uh, with a cleaver. All right, next up is from Cold Steel. This is the last of the folders. Uh, you knew that there had to be a Cold Steel here. And um, I'm putting this one out here because it's a nice balance. This is the Formax Scout. The Formax size and build wise is a nice balance between um, let's say the Voyager large series. So the four inch bladed Voyager series and the big, you know, five and a half inch folders, the giant cold steel folders. This one has a giant feel, but only has a four inch blade. Am I right? It just looks bigger than four inches, but I think it's cause it's so wide. Yeah. It's like four and an eighth inch. That's OS eight, uh, OS 10. No, wait. Yeah, this is OS 10 and Grivery. So this is a super inexpensive version of this normally very expensive knife. The 4 Max was, uh, now they have a 5, five Max, but the 4 Max was the flagship for a while. And, um, you know, they had versions made in Italy. They had versions made in America um, with Contour G10 and just super luxurious, expensive, uh, sort of peak Demco um, cold steel. and um, a lot of us couldn't afford it <clears throat> or, uh, you know, wasn't wasn't spending that kind of money on cold steels. And they realized that and came out with the uh, budget version. And it's awesome. This one was a gift from uh, Jimmy Slash. Thank you so much for this, Jimmy. That's why I put the Jimmy Slash um, lanyard on it there. Uh, but if this is too big, which I totally get. Um, and maybe you want something a little nicer, uh, that is uh, slightly nicer materials and uh, fit and finish. Well, you might go with the AD10. The AD10 also uh, represents uh, a, a peak Demco design, but this one has Contour G10. This one has gotten a lot of use. Contour G10, this is an early one with a hollow ground blade. Um, now they're full flat ground, just like this. but nearly the same size but has a way smaller carry feel and profile um but two awesome drop point blades you notice that uh drop point plays heavily in this category because it's so um well it's they're they're very very useful blades they're also not uh, too threatening and uh they're great all arounders so great one knife option i would say is this a uh, four max scout because it can really go where some of those bigger blades can go except for spanning uh they obviously can't span the same uh but it is just stout and sturdy and rough and ready and good to go how many cliches can i throw into one sentence all right now we're going to get into the fixed blades and these are these are one knife options also but i'm not giving you any any alternatives here they are they they are plenty uh, this is the Mora Knife Companion, and I got this in Germany uh, at the PX at the the Ramstein Ramstein Air Base. Um, we went in there; there were all sorts of knives, and many of them cheap and cheesy. But I saw this, and I, was, I had to have it. I have not uh, had a modern Mora. I have the uh, Mora Number no. Two with the wooden handle, and that's a great little knife. But I always wanted a companion, and it, it is awesome. Uh, it's a four and a half inch blade of uh, uh, Swedish stainless. So I'm assuming it's 14C or 12C, uh, 27, one of those. Uh, really ergonomic handle, nice and grippy and just very comfortable. You can see I've used it quite a bit. It is a, such a nice carving knife. Um, I used it to carve a spatula when I cooked my, when we were cooking something over the fire. Oh, croque messieurs. Um, I, carved a spatula and this thing is awesome i was using this in my boon 2 which has an apple seed edge or a convex edge and i was finding yeah that scandy grind is awesome just digs in and you can have so much control uh this knife i think would be a great single fixed blade if you you're not really into fixed blades but you want one for utility and by the way uh, according to um According to Ed Calderon, they make amazing fighting self-defense knives. Um, but uh, if you wanted a one knife fixed blade option, this is definitely uh, a way to go. Uh, Mora, I would go with any Mora 
but the companion comes in a lot of different colors and i think it's pretty much their flagship model so they have a lot of different options by the way great sheath just drops in there and you can clip it on your pocket you can clip it on your belt um it's just good to go and ready to go. Next is a tops knife. And this has gotten a lot of use over the years because it is just so universally awesome. And I'll start with that great pouch sheath. Much like the Mora knife, it's just there. You just pull it out, drop it in, and you're good to go. Uh, so it's great to have on the on the belt when you're camping or working. You know, when you're when you're using a knife, pull it pulling it out and putting it back in a lot. This is a great uh, sheath for that. This is the Tex Creek. So it is 1095 blade steel from tops, full flat, uh, full tang blade here uh, with nice micarta handles, contoured nicely. You get the Coke bottle, very comfortable. Uh, much bigger hands. This would accommodate much bigger hands uh, than mine. <clears throat> You've got that great jimping up front, but you also have a nice swedge. So if you have to jam it into something, stab it into something, uh, thrust it, it would make for a uh, a good, pretty good thruster. I got this uh, because I thought I was going to EDC it. I had just started uh, making Kydex sheaths for myself, and I thought this would be a good one for it. I found that the handle's too long for me to EDC this, but I did make a, a great Kydex sheath for it. Got to dig that out. So that is the Tops uh, Tex Creek. And I will say that all Tops knives that I've ever handled, and I've handled like probably all of them because I've spent a lot of time at their, uh, at their giant sprawling table at Blade Show, and I have a couple of them. They're all so well-made and uh, just sturdy as hell. And then you add the 1095 with their heat treat. They're tough. They'll go the distance. Another one that's tough and will go the distance is the SRK. From cold steel you knew there was going to be a cold steel here you probably thought it would be the trail master uh which i truly truly adore it is my most indispensable fixed blade uh but this one is probably a better all-arounder just due to its size it's got a smaller uh smaller blade and a smaller overall carry package the blade is six inches you've got a clip point with a zero ground swedge so in a pinch this is a good fighter uh, but it's also, it's also, uh, I mean, well, I should say it would make for a good fighter because of that zero ground swedge, uh, making it a, a good stabber and thruster. But also if you uh, used it percussively, you could split or break, you know, so a good fighter in that regard. Uh, but also it, it will gum up your, it will destroy your baton after a while, but after a long while. Um, if you're using this to baton, which you easily could, it's got that uh, mid-height saber grind, so it's going to uh, pop um, pop logs open. Uh, it's got a nice um, grivery handle with the Coke bottle. It's grippy, but not too grippy. You know, it's that cold steel, uh, semi-rubbery feel. Um, this is a great all-around knife. I know that the, the Navy SEALs, that's uh, always a good endorsement. I know SEALs uh, in the past have used this and, um, for, for what it's worth, <laughs> they use their knives in a lot of different ways than, than I do. That's for sure. And, uh, you know, they survive by their tools. So that's always a good endorsement. Um, I would also put the SOG seal pup in here, but again, I could go, I could put a lot of fixed blade knives in here. Uh, this one is a classic and, uh, this one helped inspire the K bar, um, and knives like this helped inspire the K bar. This is the buck 119 this is their classic uh hunting fixed blade clip point i just think this is such a cool knife ever since i was a little kid and would see this in the in the hardware store uh case and man i want that i, I always thought it looked like a pirate knife with this big uh big uh curvy swedge and that hollow grind it's menacing looking and in all the right ways but it also looks like a classic uh um mountain man knife classic outdoors knife classic hunting knife it's got that big solidor no it's not solidor i can't remember what this material is called but it's got that big fat handle that i used to not like how fat it is now i really like how that feels in hand uh, probably makes it uh very handy when you're uh field dressing game though i don't know but i'm guessing that big fat handle uh adds something uh when you're skinning an animal. Uh, I really love the aluminum pommel. I love the shape of it, the feel, the look. 
it's totally old school looking. I love the uh, asymmetrical quillions. Uh, but also this is, uh, oh, and also zero ground swedge. So uh, nasty if you needed to fight with it. But this is also uh, one of those knives. It's 420 steel, but it's got an awesome heat treat. And it just proves that you don't need the super steel in a great one knife option. The Buck 119. They also have the 120, which is the longer version of it, featured in the movie Scream uh, as the as the movie horror movie knife. Uh, and a great sheath. Sorry, I'm going to do this one-handed, but great sheath with this retention strap here. All right, second to last, I alluded to it just before, and this is probably not the version uh, you will get uh, or that I'm actually recommending, but uh, this is the K-Bar. And in this case, this is a 1991 reissue of the 19, uh, of the World War II K-Bar. Uh, so it's got a really sharp back swedge. It's a little bit more of a fighter than utility knife, uh, but this is the K-Bar Combat Utility Knife, and you can buy it in all sorts of um, configurations these days, either with that beautiful stacked leather handle or uh, with... Um, uh, different kinds of synthetic handles, different colors. You can get it uh, in all black. You can get it in all green. You can get it uh, in gray and blue for Space Force. You know, you can you can get the knife in all different um, versions. Though now the swedge is not as curved. It's a, a flatter swedge, and it's definitely not sharp like that. Like this, I I I definitely sharpened it a little bit, but it came you know definitely cutting sharp. So this is like I said, more weapon than what you would get these days. Uh, but the the regular K bars that you get these days make great outdoors knives. If you have any um, any uh, doubt about that, you can watch many um, many an outdoor video, say with Nut and Fancy, where he's using uh, K bars to do all sorts of outdoor stuff. This one, if you look at it, has a bit of a wonky grind. Not sure what was going on with K bar in the '90s. Um, you know, things were crazy in the '90s. They were uh, they, people were playing fast and loose. Uh, but yeah, look at that grind. That's hilarious. But still just an incredible knife and a great, great one knife fixed blade option. And I would say that if you're uh, a folder collector and you're going to get one fixed blade, this is a great way to go because not only is it incredibly capable, uh, it's a great tool and a great weapon, but it also is a tip of the hat to our past if you're American. Last up here, this is this is the representation of all SE fixed blade knives. This is not an SE. This was pre-SE. This is an Ontario uh, knife and tool Artac 2, which later became the SE Hungless. Uh, but this style of knife, and they make, you know, SE makes all different sizes from the three uh, or even the smaller ones. The, the, um, well, they make them real small up to real big and they're full flat ground, full tang, outdoor fixed blade knives oftentimes 1095 i think usually almost always 1095 blade steel <laughs> and uh micarta handle great micarta handle on this uh my brother has the hungless like i said this is the r attack they look identical and my brother almost chopped his leg off <laughs> using his hungless sorry vic if you're listening uh but he was he was doing a lot of work outside and it he was doing a particularly hard downward chop. It glanced off the material and buried itself deep in his calf, um, ruining a Father's Day, I think it was, and uh, and uh, a barbecue that was uh, imminent, and uh, he spent the day in the hospital. So uh, I can attest, as my brother can, to the flesh-cleaving capabilities of these large outdoors knives, but I know that that's not why they became famous. They became famous because they make outstanding one-knife options. All right. Thank you for joining me on this 12 great one knife options fixed and folder uh, version of the Knife Junkie podcast. Uh, let me know what your favorite one knife options are. If you had to run out the door and could only take one, what would it be? Uh, uh, an interesting question. Maybe it's the one that you already have in your car. All right. Be sure to join us tomorrow night. That's Thursday for Thursday Night Knives, 10 p.m. Eastern Standard Time right here on YouTube. Uh, we will probably be giving something away because we give a lot of stuff away because we have a lot of generous friends. Thank you, Dave. Join us then and also join us on Sunday for a great interview show with a knife luminary. For Jim, working his magic behind the switcher, I'm Bob DeMarco saying until next time, don't take dull for an answer.
Thanks for listening to the Knife Junkie Podcast. If you enjoyed the show, please rate and review at reviewthepodcast.com. For show notes for today's episode, additional resources, and to listen to past episodes, visit our website, theknifejunkie.com. You can also watch our latest videos on YouTube at theknifejunkie.com slash YouTube. Check out some great knife photos on theknifejunkie.com slash Instagram, and join our Facebook group at theknifejunkie.com slash Facebook. And if you have a question or comment, email them to Bob at theknifejunkie.com or call our 24-7 listener line at 724-466-4487, and you may hear your comment or question answered on an upcoming episode of the Knife Junkie Podcast. Thank you.